this video, I will show you everything you need to know about the Microsoft Word View tab and ribbon in depth. Let's get started. And this video is one in a series that covers each of the Microsoft Word tabs and their corresponding ribbons. And I promise you, if you will watch each of these episodes, you will understand Microsoft Word like you never have before. So here I am in a document about the history of new wave and synth pop music. And I can use this view tab to really help me to see this document the way I want to see it. When you click the View tab, of course, you get several groups of tools, and we're going to take them left to right. First, we have the Views group. And for me, whenever I use Microsoft Word, print layout seems to be the default. So as I'm working in Microsoft Word, I'm basically getting a preview and a glimpse of what the printed document is gonna look like when I'm done with it. If you prefer though, you can switch to read mode. And read mode gives me a nice page effect or book effect. So instead of reading left to right across an entire page, it's breaking up the contents of this document into two smaller pages. And so I can read here, and then I can move over here to the right to continue reading. When I'm ready to move to the next page, I can click here, and it moves to the next page. And so it takes what is a Word document meant to be maybe printed on papers that are stapled together, but then it turns it into much more of a book reading experience with smaller pages on the left, smaller pages on the right that you can just flip through. When I'm ready to get out of read mode, all I need to do is go down here to the lower right corner and click this button, and this will take me back to the print layout view. Now we also have a web layout. Back up here in the views group, I could click on web layout and you can see what happens. It stretches out my Word document as if it were a web page. Of course, web pages aren't limited by the size of a paper. And so my same content looks quite a bit different when it's in web layout. Now each of these three options, read mode, print layout, and web layout are also accessible here in the lower right corner of Microsoft Word. So I can switch here to read mode, here to print mode, and here to web layout. We also have two other options here in the views group. We have outline, and that takes my document and turns it into an outline using bullets. And this layout doesn't work very well with my existing document, but I could select text and then use these tools tools to format my text and my document in more of an outline format. I'm going to close the outline view and then we have one other option here in the views group and that is draft. If I click on draft this view will display the document without any formatting. It shows only the text content. So any special formatting that I've chosen or inserted into this document, it's not visible to me. I just see the text content. So this draft view can be particularly helpful when you just want to focus for a time on the text itself and making some quick edits. For now though, I'm gonna go back to the print layout, but each of these views has its place as you use Microsoft Word. Let's move now to the immersive group. We have two options, focus and immersive reader. Sometimes when we're working in a very big document or a complicated document, it can be overwhelming to know that I have six pages to read or 50 pages to read. Well, to help with that, we have the focus tool. If I click on focus, notice what happened. My Microsoft Word ribbon is gone, at least I can't see it, and some of the other distractions here at the right and left have been blacked out. This, in theory, will enable me to focus more intensely on the words themselves, and I can just read through this document without the distractions above and to the sides of my document. When I'm done working in the focus view, I can tap the escape key on the keyboard, and I'm back in the print layout of Microsoft Word. Next, let's look at Immersive Reader. Immersive Reader is particularly helpful when you're trying to make text more accessible. So I'm gonna click on Immersive Reader, and immediately, the way I experience this document changes dramatically. I have a series of tools here that can help make this text more accessible to me or to whomever the intended audience is. 
Let's start with text spacing. By clicking that button, I can increase the spacing between words, characters, and lines. And this can make it easier for people to distinguish between words and to focus on each word one at a time. So for some people, this improves the reading experience. I'm gonna turn off text spacing, and let's jump over here to column width. If I click on column width, I can choose how wide or narrow the columns in my document will appear. Very narrow, you can see what happens. It just uses the very middle of the screen. I could go to wide. Now it's stretched out all the way across my screen. And I could go with moderate. And there's various ways in which column width could be useful. One would be if you're accessing this Word document on a different device than you normally might access it on. Maybe you've got a tablet with a small screen or a smartphone and it's just hard to access this document as it is, you could certainly go to the View tab, choose Immersive Reader, and change how wide the columns are in the document. Now, as soon as I click here to close the Immersive Reader, look what happens. It takes me back to my document. So these changes of how the document is viewed, those don't affect the actual document itself. Focus and Immersive Reader and even these other views, as you switch back and forth between them, you're not really changing your document. You're just changing how you experience the document. I'm going to click back on Immersive Reader so you can see that it is possible to change the page color. And again, this is just a view option. It's not going to really change the nature of the document. If you print it out, it's not going to print out with these colors. But for some people, switching the page color can help the text stand out more and pop so that they can read it better. We also have an option for line focus. When you click there, you can switch from none to one line. And the idea here is to focus in on one line of your document at a time. And you can just click on these arrows to go back one or ahead one. And this can really help some people to focus in on exactly the information that they're trying to understand at any one time. For me, one line at a time would be kind of difficult, but three lines, that's doable, and I think that would help me to focus a little better. And you can also do five lines at a time. And so this is basically dimming everything in the document except for the five lines that I'm trying to understand right now. I'm gonna turn off line focus, so I'll switch it to none. We've already looked at text spacing. We also have syllables. If you turn on syllables, look what it does. And to help you see this better, I'm gonna go to a more moderate column width view and I'm gonna click back to view and also zoom let's say to 200% we'll look at that tool in just a minute but back in the immersive reader and the syllables area look what this does it identifies for us each syllable in the entire document of course, this would be helpful for students who are trying to learn to read and pronounce words correctly. It would also help them to identify syllables in early grades. But I think this would also be useful when composing music lyrics, even poetry. So I think that's an interesting feature that lets us see the syllables in our document. Finally, we have a tool that's very powerful and can be very helpful, and that is the Read Aloud tool. I'm gonna to go ahead and click that, and notice that I've highlighted part of my document, so I'll click Read Aloud. Legacy and continued influence. While the commercial peak of new wave and synth pop occurred in the 1980s, their influence persists in contemporary music. I'm gonna pause it there, but you can see what it does. It reads with a very natural sounding voice. It reads the content that I've selected. You can have it read the entire document if if you want to and this is a fabulous way to kind of review your document listen for how it sounds when it's spoken out loud are any of the sentences kind of awkward read aloud can be a very powerful tool I'm gonna click to close immersive reader and I'll jump back to the view tab let's move now to the page movement group by default, I have this set up to have vertical page movement. So as I browse down from one page to the next, the pages move and advance vertically. But if you prefer, you can turn on side to side page movement. So now I can use this slider at the bottom of the screen. And as I drag to the right, look what happens. The pages turn and it's just a little bit different experience. So that's an interesting feature. I'm gonna switch back to vertical and let's move on now to the show group. 
Right now, I have the rulers set to be shown. If I uncheck that, they disappear from my view, and I can put them back whenever I need to. I can also add grid lines. This can make it much harder to read the text while I'm in Microsoft Word, but it can help me to see how the words and perhaps images line up and where I could move different things to so that they line up better or differently if that's important to you. I'm gonna turn off grid lines. And we also have a navigation pane. If you turn that on here, you can see it appear here at the left. The navigation pane shows us the headings in our document. Right now I just have the one heading, also pages and results. So if you do a search, for example, I'm gonna search for new wave. It gives me 29 results and I can browse through those. Now, each of these little mini tabs that I have can help me to quickly navigate throughout my document. So for example, I can just click here on page four and it jumps me to page four in Microsoft Word. What about headings? Well, I only have one, but if I click on that, it takes me to the place in my document where that heading can be found. If I click on results, these are the results of my search, but I can just browse through these and say, okay, that's the one I want. I click on it and instantly I'm taken to that paragraph in my document. So this navigation pane, it's not very helpful if you just have one page or two pages, but if you've got a 10 page document or a 100 page document, navigation pane is gonna be very important and helpful to you as you build out your document. All right, let's move over here to the Zoom group. And this is just what you would expect. It helps you to zoom in on your document so that you can see it better or the way in which you want to see it. Now we do have a zoom tool here in the lower right corner of Microsoft Word. This should pretty much always be visible to you. And you can just click and drag this slider to zoom out or to zoom in to see the document the way you want to see it. So that's very helpful. But here on the view tab and ribbon in the zoom group, there are even more options. I can click here on zoom and choose one of these preset zooms. So 75%, click OK and it zoomed me out a little bit. What about 200%? And so if you know that you like 200% zoom, it may be best just to go here and select zoom 200%, click OK. That might be easier than using the slider. You can also be very specific here. You could type in, let's say 124% zoom, click OK. If you know that's the zoom you want in your document, this is a great place to go to enter that in. You could also choose page width, or text width or the whole page. And these will change how the document looks for you when you're using Microsoft Word. So I click OK and you can see the changes made. Back in the Zoom tool options, you can also choose how many pages show up. If I click OK, you can also choose to show many pages at once and you can see the results there. Back here on the View tab in the Zoom group, you can see we do have some buttons that accomplish some of the same things. If you click one page, it just shows you one page at a time. Multiple pages takes me back to that view that I chose when I clicked here on Zoom. And also here I have page width that makes my document basically fill the page, fill the screen. Now there's one little tool that I skipped over and that's this button here. With a single click, it shows you 100% of the document, including the margins and this gray area here on the sides. Okay, let's move on now to this window group and see how this works. First, I'll try new window. As soon as I clicked new window, it looked like my document refreshed, but what really happened was that it opened up another window into this document. So these are both the same document. I'm just looking at it in a different window, really an additional window. So to show this better, I'm going to resize these two windows so that they're side by side. And I'm gonna go here to the first page of actual content and I'll just make an edit. Maybe I'll change the word witness to were. Notice that it immediately changes in this other window as well. That's because these aren't two separate documents. They are two different windows into the exact same document. So why would you ever do this? Well, there are a few different reasons, but one might be, let's say you're working on the introduction of a chapter of your book, but you want to be reminded about all of the content in that chapter so that you can better represent it in the introduction. So you might be typing and working here in the intro while reading further down in your document. So it can be very helpful to have two windows open. For now, I'm gonna close this second window and I'll maximize Microsoft Word. Now, as you add new windows, I think I've added now four or five
5, it may be helpful to go here to the View tab and to choose Arrange All. So I've done that and look what I see now. I have actually three different windows into this document and they're all arranged so that I can see that there are three of them. That's a little too much for me, so I'm gonna X out of a couple of these windows and then I'll maximize my original window. We also have a split button and this accomplishes a similar thing to what I was showing when I clicked new window and put the two windows side by side. By adding a split, it lets me look at two places in my document at once the introduction and further on in the document. When I'm done, I can click to remove the split and I'm back to just one single view. Let's add a new window again, just so that you can see that with more than one window open, in addition to just manually clicking and dragging and putting those side by side, you can click view side by side. And this is what I should have done earlier. It's much faster to see those two views right by each other. Now, as I'm looking at these two windows, Notice what's happening. I'm browsing down on the first window, but the second window is also browsing with me. It's scrolling. That may be exactly what you want, but if it's not, you may need to go back here to the View tab, Window Group, and turn off Synchronous Scrolling. With that turned off, now you can scroll on one window, but it doesn't automatically scroll on the other, so you can be specific about what window you want to scroll and what window you don't want to scroll. We can also go here to Reset Window Position, so that can be a helpful tool as well. Finally, we have a Switch Windows button. I can click this to bring my first window view back on top, and then if I want to, I can switch back. Our next two groups may not be applicable to most users, but let's talk about them briefly. We have the Macros button. When you click the top part of that button, it will list for you all of the macros that are set up in your Word document. If you're not familiar with Microsoft Word macros, please watch my other videos on that topic, but I'm gonna cancel out of that for now. If you click the bottom half of the Macros button, that's another way to view all of the macros in your document. I don't have any in this case, but it also gives you a tool to record a new macro. And you could just click that, name the macro, assign it to a button or a keyboard, and then click OK and record your macro. We also have some SharePoint properties. If you click there, it takes me to a page where I can change my SharePoint information for this document. I'm gonna click this arrow to go back, and that completes our review of the Microsoft Word view tab and ribbon with each of its options. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell and you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, the very best way to do that is to become a channel member. But you could also support me by clicking the thanks button below the video, supporting me through my Patreon account, or by buying channel merch, and you'll see information about those options in the description below the video.